Hello. Hey, Queens. Hey. Hi, Nathan. Hi. And oh, oh, is that another voice I hear on the line? Oh, Who could it be? Guess could say. Ooh. Do I get to say hello? Hi, Tandy. <laughs> So if anybody has not listened to one of these episodes before with our resident psychic, Tandy, this is one of our episodes that we call Histories Mysteries. Nathan, tell our listeners who maybe haven't had the pleasure of listening to a Tandy episode before, what is our History Mysteries episode all about? Ooh, so we take a little bit of something from a story from the past that Katie and I covered, and we were always like, I don't know. What happened? What could have happened there? There's this possibility, there's this possibility, and there's this possibility. What the F? And so we have to say, you know, maybe there's a different way that we could possibly find out something that may have happened. So we have our resident psychic, Tandy, and she will channel what she channels. Yeah, Tandy, oh, before we get into it, tell everybody about yourself and about Unicorn Wellness. Hi, I'm Tandy Gutierrez. I'm an intuitive psychic tarot reader. I'm a master Pilates instructor, and I'm a magical mentor. So I cover the spectrum and the short version is I'm a wellness switch. <laughs> so if you're looking to empower yourself, dismantle internalized patriarchy and really move into authenticity, empowered choice making, the beat of your own drummer without worrying about side eye or judgment. This is a home for you on unicornwellnessstudio.com and potentially in magical mentoring. So Magical Mentoring is a four month program. It's based in the tarot. It's super witchy. It's also probably more practical than you think mm -hmm. and way more magical than you realize. Uh, I've, I've definitely learned more self care. And that has been something that has been super powerful for me personally is saying, I need to put the phone down and not answer anybody and not be a people pleaser and do something for myself. And I think that that's been the most impactful for me going through it. That is so, so cool. And it is so cool for that you are here today, Tandy. We'll definitely have a link in the show notes if anybody wants to check out the magical mentoring or anything that Tandy has to offer. But speaking of offerings, should we get into it? I am so excited about this one. A reminder to our <laughs> listeners, we will tell Tandy about a historical mystery. And from there, she will pull some tarot cards and just tell her what is coming through. Though, you know, if you're a listener and you know a lot about this topic, we don't tell her everything up at top, just what she needs to know to get into the mystery. And it's always interesting to see what details come through in the cards. So Nathan, take it away. So first off, Tandy, do you know anything about the woman named Mary, Queen of Scots? Probably only her name. You heard the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard the name. Okay. <laughs> well, that's not uncommon. Yes. Right. <laughs> not, right a, like... not a lot of people know the entire story of Mary Queen yeah. of Scots. Yeah. There was probably like three or four mysteries in her life that we could go into because this woman lived a lot of life, but we are just going to get to one of them today. So Nathan, tell let's bring Mary Queen of Scots into the world. Let's tell her, say when she was born and everything. December 8th. 1542 in a palace in Scotland. So wouldn't I love to be born in a palace in Scotland? That <laughs> didn't happen. Ugh. Her father was James V of Scotland, and she was his only legitimate child. So when he died in war a week after her birth, Mary became the Queen of Scotland at only six days old. We have a saying here at Queen's Podcast, which is <laughs> babies don't need jobs. Because this shit happens a lot. <laughs> Babies don't need jobs. Babies don't need to be queen. But she was. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like I was a queen on day six. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it wasn't a job. It was just the aura of no. your personality. So politically, what you need to know at the time is that England and Scotland were separate countries. The UK, Great Britain hadn't really happened yet. But England very, very, very much wanted to own Scotland as well. And so England and Scotland are always, always, always at war. And for the safety of little baby Mary, 
and to make an alliance. Mary was moved over to France at age six, and she married the French prince at a really young age. And she got to be the queen of France for like a full year and a half when she was 17, so that was nice. But sadly, her first husband, who was also a teenager, died young when she was sent back to Scotland, where it was time for her to start acting like Queen Regnant that she was. Yeah. Okay, so some major, major skimming over some like big political stuff. Um, But since Mary is a woman ruling in her own right, who she was going to marry was a big fucking deal. Like who she was going to have children with. Is she going to make an alliance with another country? And England is also really concerned about who she's going to marry. She chooses for herself a guy named Henry Stewart, who is also known as Lord Darnley. Nobody is happy about this. English aren't happy about it. The Queen of England, Elizabeth I, was super pissed off about it. And most of the Scottish nobility was also not happy about it. Really seems that the only people that liked this idea were Mary and Lord Donnelly. (laughs) She seemed to have the major hots for this guy. So there had to have been some chemistry. Yeah. And he is now married to a fucking queen. Yeah. She got pregnant really quickly after they got married. But the honey fa- honeymoon phase didn't last very long when she realized that, oh, I have made a mistake. Lord Darnley was arrogant, rude. He probably had a drinking problem. He was really jealous. And he was really jealous of this guy who was Mary's like personal secretary, this guy named David Rizzio. We don't want to go into too many details, but what you need to know is that Darnley murders Rizzio, which effectively ends Mary and his relationship. She's like, boo, mm -mm, that's not a good look Uh -uh. for my PR reps. Uh -uh. No, no. Uh -uh. And it's not even a year into the marriage. She hasn't even given birth to their child yet. She's still pregnant. Yeah. (laughs) And so now she has had her baby and it's a boy Darnley is more or less like kicked out of her bed, kicked out of her home, and he is living in a palace called Kirko Field. And so on February 9th, 1567, Mary, Queen of Scots, visits her husband, and then the next day she leaves to attend a wedding a few towns over, a few hours away. On February 10th at 2 a.m., Lord Darnley's bedroom explodes. Someone put explosives in a cellar that was directly under his room. And the next day, Darnley's body was found in his nightclothes several yards away from the house. So the explosion did not kill him. He'd actually been smothered to death. So there are a lot of people who hated Lord Darnley. Mary being one of them. And maybe her life would be a lot easier if he just went away. So (laughs) So that's the question. Did Mary, Queen of Scots, have her second husband, Henry Stewart, Lord Darnley, murdered? Before we get into the cards, the process starts early in the day. I start cleansing the space, start meditating, I go for a walk, and I start to just try to allow things. They start coming in. I have no idea how this pertains to anything. I'm just going to share stuff. Today, it's been very loud about a certain tapestry. Again, we'll get into the cards because that's the point of of, of doing the reading. There was something about, like, when you were talking about, uh, okay, hang in there. Is it Darnley? Mm-hmm. How do you mm-hmm. Henry you Stewart. His name? Henry Stewart, Lord yeah, Darnley. It, Lord Darnley. That um, that you're like he was pro- like he was super rude. He was super arrogant. This morning there were images of like a, a man throwing like chicken bones at a tapestry, like being drunk and rowdy and like at dinner and really uncouth and just like throwing shit and people thinking that like he was just trash, like there was these very loud narratives about like chicken bones and okay and and dragonflies and i don't know if it's the dragon or the fly or dragonfly or if it's on a crest or if it's on a tapestry i don't know okay. so those are things that were moving through this morning that that tapestry bit and the chicken bones seem to be louder <laughs> um but we want to know did mary have lord darnley murdered so he's found smothered he's elsewhere the explosion blew him no so what we assume is that the place exploded 
and he got up and started running because they, they were obviously oh. whoever put the explosives under his room was hoping that would kill him and it didn't and he got up and ran and so he was found and they assumed someone struggled uh strangled him so he was strangled or smothered i've read both either way he he was killed and we just want to know did mary have him did mary order that so we just straight up asked did mary have him murdered and it's a very interesting card that just gets deeper and deeper okay because this is the strength card so i'll show it to you all that this is out of the wild unknown deck and the strength card it, it's in this deck is a lion with a rose in its mouth it's a major arcana card so as a classic reading the strength card would be a yes and you all know me i'm like the yes and the strength card is about goddess energy and empowerment but this is about us understanding taming our inner monsters our shadows like the worst portions of ourselves so this card would say yes that she did have it ordered she did absolutely this is connected to leo energy says don't fuck with my children like don't come anywhere near my kids it's hyper protective particularly of the children that you love this is for the protection of the things that i love if you come past it do not be surprised if i kill you i told you i would kill you if you did this if you are threatening what is mine and what i love so it's a yes she absolutely did and there was a lot of run up to it like i've warned you yeah. it's your own fault now it's a choice at this point yeah so it is terrifying energy it's really strong energy but it comes from a place of love. It also comes from a place of protection. This is what we hear in this card, in this reading, that, yeah, she did. Okay. Interesting. That kind of makes sense with the whole family thing, because obviously they would have, she probably would have loved to divorce him, but she was very, very, very Catholic. And if she would have, mm. and they had that son together, and if she would have divorced him, that could have fucked with her son's legitimacy. I think that he was a threat to her. Like at first she was like, oh, I'm so in love. And then he was acting a fool, making an ass of himself. So she saw him as a liability. It's like... I can't trust him. And so at that point, when you're in that position of power, yeah, it's not great to condone murder. No, <laughs> it's wrong. Murder is wrong. But she's at that point where she's like, okay, I have this power. She's built, trying to build amongst all this political turmoil. He's only going to make things worse for her, not better. He, here's what I hear, like with these details, it, it's pulling towards a dragonfly of like, dragonflies can go in any direction at any time. That's their symbolism and spiritual symbolism. They fly like a helicopter, so they can really go anywhere. It's giving this vibe of like such a wild card. The, the vibe that I get, what I hear, is that she really did love him. You said it. She really does still. She's like, what the fuck? Like, I really... I really wanted this to work. Mm -hmm. He's literally bound to go in any direction at any time. Hers was this choice of, I can only control so much, but he's a fucking wild card yeah. that is a danger to me, is a danger to this lineage, is a danger to the country and to my child to be. And she was like, there's really no other way Mm -hmm. to to control the narrative or to stay safe in it tried to set boundaries tried to set him up in ways of like dude we married cool like go spend your money and go be a man in the world like it's fine but don't xyz yeah and then it was xyz and then she he just embarrassed her all the time and killed her friend david rizzio do we know m more about that we just know that he murdered him we do have more we know very <clears throat> specifically and very dramatically okay. He gathered up a bunch of the men at court and stabbed David Rizzio 57 times in front of Mary while she was like seven months pregnant. Yeah. Douchebag. <laughs> I mean... What? Not a cool dude. Not a chill guy. Not, Not a chill all. dude. Okay, maybe here's another question because some people have theorized that David Rizzio and Darnley were like actually maybe having a down low affair. Oh. So was that part of the reason why he stabbed him or was it just pure 
jealousy and douche douchiness. <laughs> douchiness. <laughs> douchiness to the extreme. I keep the showing bit. me a trash bag. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> This fucking guy, well, Lord Darnley. He, he would be trash. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah like, like yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Word like, a. you can be on the DL, dude. I get it. It's way back in the day. You don't want everybody to know you're gay because you probably get killed because of yeah. that. Yeah. I get it. I get it. But don't kill the dude <laughs> that you might have been sleeping with. But we don't know that. Yeah. That's just like a theory. <laughs> that well, people my. Have had. Okay. Which is a pretty basic theory. But the energetics first was that. Rizzio and and Mary Queen of Scots had something going on. Okay, I mean that's what that's definitely what Darnley thought. I, clarity's sake, energetically, as I shuffled the card that's on top, this is whether Rizzio and Darnley had a relationship. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that face. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what is the card? One of my most favorite cards. So hang in there, okay? <laughs> um, it's it's the Empress. So this is, you know, I'm just the messenger and a reader, y'all. So it's another major arcana card. Again, these are big energies. Um, these are spiritually based lessons. These are karmic based lessons. The Empress is one of my most favorite cards because she's shameless, like pleasure. The vibe is that it was the three of them together. That there's discrepancy between like whose baby that is or was ah uh, uh, <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> so because that would make that would make a li- things a little stickier <laughs> right because i'm like why would he drag this person in front of her and then this contributes to why she was like putting boundaries like we agreed to this together like we could have had everything we literally can rule everything all you gotta do is just be cool with the setup of it, and then she gets pregnant. And so, I, th- mm, it was the three of them. So, uh, there's the three of them. In David Rizzio's Wikipedia page, it said Lord Darnley is said to have been jealous of their friendship, so Rizzio and Mary's friendship, because of rumors that Rizzio had impregnated Mary. So, uh, uh. <laughs> I literally don't know these people i don't know this story (laughs) i i just pulled that card out because i love this card so much this card is shamelessness and in the best way of like i don't fucking care what anybody thinks like i don't i'm i don't prescribe to constructs and like pleasure is pleasure love is love touch is touch and mind your own goddamn business so when you all were talking about rizzio initially i was like oh well, he and Mary Queen of Scots were together. And then you're communicating that there was conversation about Darnley and Rizzio. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 it was the three of them. And that was kind of the, like, wild card of it all was not knowing who the father was and how he was, like, Darnley would have been terrified that that ousted him somehow. And she's like, dude, you're my husband. I chose you. You've got the placement. You've got the legality. Like, it doesn't matter. We already discussed this. But because he, she was afraid he was going to kill the baby or kill her. Ooh. I mean, he was, he was a little unhinged. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> I mean, as unhinged as it gets. Honestly, she was worried. Like, that that was what was going to happen. And then she, like, kind of pushed it off. Because, again, she was like, we made these agreements. We did this together. But she was like, I'm a fucking queen. I was a fucking queen when I was six days born. Like, I can do whatever I want. But there were boundaries and parameters and consent and conversation about it. And when he lost his mind over it, she was like, that is not the agreement. And like, you can't take down everything. This is just fucking bullshit. Maybe she was scared that, I mean, when you were a queen back then, regardless if you're regnant or just married to the king or whatever, your number one job is make a child to carry on your line. And so- You're getting the vibe that, like, she was afraid that if Darnley lived, he might get drunk and tell people, hey, I think that might be Rizzio's kid, and fuck with her line of succession. Absolutely. Because also with Mary, a piece of context. So Mary, Queen of Scots, and her son are next in line for the English throne. So her son would go on to unite Scotland and England. And start yeah. Great Britain, the UK, basically. And so Again, she knew that that was all hinging, like, 
combining those countries was all hinging on her child being a legitimate child. For sure. You secure at all costs. That's, I mean, Mm -hmm. I'll do whatever we need to do. This is the only option. And I think she was somebody who did try communicating and setting boundaries and then was like, Nobody's listening. That's not going to happen. And we just can't have this. Yes. On this. She visited him the day before. We don't know what they talked about. Like if she was like checking what his headspace was and he was like spouting crazy shit while drunk. Maybe that's when he was throwing the chicken bones. Like who knows? Oh, I love I love that there's this love triangle. I know. It's great. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So Mary Queen of Scots have a favorite test. <laughs> Oh, poor darling, though. She was, she was like, eventually imprisoned, prisoned fancily in a gilded cage, essentially. She could yeah. only, like, pray at a chapel and stay at one place. How many years was it that she was like, like 20 that? 20 years. So she after did. the death of Darnley, she m- kind of secretly marries the guy, a guy that a lot of people thought was, like, the main instigator in the murder. And basically, she is forced to abdicate. Her throne to her son, her like one year old son, and Mm. put in prison. And then she escapes prison and flees to England, thinking that Queen Elizabeth is going to help her get her throne back. But instead, Queen Elizabeth puts her in prison for 20 years, like a house prison. She wasn't in a dungeon, but she was in a house prison. And eventually, Queen Elizabeth um, had her beheaded. So wild, wild fucking life. To this place again where it makes me cry. It's like, it's so, I don't know. It's just got this vibe of like women trying to make choices that actually are the high-minded choice. Even if she had somebody ordered to be killed, she was like, this is the only way to do it, you know? And then nobody having her back and it just getting so dark and so quiet. She probably felt through her whole life very alone because her own country was very torn on if she should even be queen because, you know, vagina. And also because she was Catholic, Catholic versus Protestant at this time in that place in the world was this whole thing. I'm curious because I know when we did The Princess in the Tower and when we did Elizabeth Bathory, you kind of felt those people like Elizabeth Woodville and Bathory were both kind of like coming through. It doesn't seem like that's the vibe today. No, she's not here. Okay. Which is why it's interesting. It feels very far away, very in a tunnel. Um, When I feel that, that's usually the protection of like, there's some non-benevolent energy there. They're not allowed in. Okay. So it feels like she's very far away that it's just sad. Yeah. It's just so sad. And it's not even like disturbed or confused. It really just feels like it just feels fucked up, right? Like you can't trust anybody. I'm trying to make the right decisions. I've got a vagina. And <laughs> nobody wants me anywhere. I'm probably maybe smarter than anybody in the room or not and just trying to do my goddamn job and it just gets messier and messier and messier and then she has this moment of like being in love with somebody or to somebody's and feeling like oh there is pleasure there is like this is beautiful like why can't this just be life and it just gets more and more fucked up from there yeah so it just feels it feels very far away I'll put it that way. That is so interesting. Because I remember you saying that, like, with Elizabeth Bathory, she's here, but she's behind the wall or whatever. You were kind of, like, getting the vibe from her. So I, maybe Mary Queen of Scots is just like, I've had, I I just want to be left alone at this point. It's literally the vibe. She was like, I don't, I mean, she's kind of like, just fuck it. Like, I don't, just leave me be. Like, can I just be? Like, just leave me alone. Whereas the Leo Elizabeth Bathory was like, are y'all talking about me? You know what I'm talking about? Literally. <laughs> like, I didn't, like, let me just shine a little bit brighter here, you know? Like, Mary Queen of Scots is like, just fuck off. Like, just, just literally fuck off. Like. <laughs> I think that was a lot of kind of what happened to her, though, as a circumstance of the crown of England going from Elizabeth to her and everybody trying to support her. And there was just so much drama behind yeah. all of that that that's what got her imprisoned and that was the cause of her getting beheaded Mm -hmm. so she's over the drama like it makes sense that she'd be like i'm just over it like yeah it happened and all that shit happened but 
Ugh, that was just a messy part of my life. I don't want to remember. Her whole again. life was. I'm, yeah, it's. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm, I wonder if, like, she looks back just being like, ooh, mistakes were made. Because, like, the reason she got beheaded while she was in that prison, first of all, it was a mistake, her thinking that she could go to England. and Because she has been saying yeah. very loudly for years that she should be Queen of England, not Elizabeth. Because Elizabeth is Protestant. And, the, and Elizabeth's mom was uh, beheaded and blah, 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 blah. And then while she was in prison, she was kind of entrapped into writing letters saying, oh, Spain or somebody's going to come over and help dethrone Elizabeth and put me on. And she was like writing these letters in code. And of course they got intercepted. So Elizabeth I was convinced to like make a death warrant for Mary, Queen of Scots. But she told her people, don't actually kill her. I just want the death warrant there. So if I decide if she fucks around again. But then Elizabeth I like, went on a trip or something, and her dudes did it without her consent. But that's another question. Did the dudes do it without her consent? Or was she like, here's the death warrant, and now I'm going to go in the other room? Do, well, do, do, do. okay. So there's... <laughs> mm, so I pulled a card because I was like, why am I obsessed about this tapestry? Um, <laughs> like, what does it have to do with anything? So let's start there, okay? That... The, that pertains to what you're asking. Like, did she tell them wink, wink? Like, were they holding it? Like, meh. it feels there's some vibe about it being a comedy of errors, right? Like, y'all, do we not know better? Don't drop the paperwork unless you really want it done because now it's in writing. Like, that's so easily misunderstood. Like, just hang in there. So the card that I pulled was the Father of Wands. So. Father of Wands is the King of Wands, which is interesting energy here. And the King of Wands is like, it's it's king. It, this is like king energy. I said it, I will it so, somebody go fucking do it. it. It happens because I say it, it happens, right? So in its most benevolent spot, the Father of Wands is about knowing when to strike. So it would be like, you need a strategy in place. Like the thing that you want is totally achievable, gettable, you can cultivate it, bring it into fruition, but you're going to need a clear strategy in order to bring it to fruition, Okay. right? Like if you've got passion, and you've got energy, this is frequency match. You've got, you do have to passionately feel it and like want it in your bones, see it already happening. And then you've got to have a strategy to put energy towards it. So when I pulled about the tapestry, it's, it's really interesting because Okay, it feels like those tapestries actually are more about England. That there is a strategy that just keeps getting, like, like the thread just keeps getting pulled. Like, it just keeps getting fucked up. That there was this aspect of Mary Queen of Scots trying to have a strategy for her being in power, right? Like, she was trying to make decisions that kept her in a place she thought was her rightful place but it just kind of kept getting fucked up like like the game of telephone and then now it's feeling like it's perhaps big game long term more about England right like versus her and she's running her mouth because she's been told since she was six days old that she's a queen like this is your birthright this is your role this is who you are and she like lived it breathed it mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So when this, like, the kill order goes out, it's like, oh, wink, wink, it's just supposed to be a placeholder to, like, scare somebody? Like, no. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't buy that. I think this was England knowing when to strike. It's already crazy pants. It's already gotten weird. She's saying all these things. Now these letters, let's just do it. Let's just handle it. And I can pretend. Plausible deniability. That I didn't. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, like, uh, no, ain't, ain't nobody buying that. You wrote it down. <laughs> Why? Who bought that? <laughs> well, she. But I find that interesting, though, that maybe maybe the, the tapestry represents <clears throat> England, and then you have this drunken guy throwing chicken bones at it, fucking up the tapestry and fucking Literally. up the plan. And that was Darnley, who's fucking up the plan. And she's like, okay, you're messing with 
the big picture yes here. literally oh that's interesting Stop. literally <laughs> that is really yeah interesting and she was that that is that is the narrative that i hear right that makes sense because it's like i've got this beautiful picture and you just keep messing it up stop calm down we already talked about this dude relax like we got it the big picture's there you and you gotta let me it. handle the big picture mm-hmm. you want to live in a palace you want to have whatever sex capades you want with my permission with me like we can do this you gotta lay low and you can't act like an asshole and you can't act like trash and the cards are and already stocked be- stacked against me because i'm a woman and the cards are already stacked against me because i'm catholic in a time where that's not always the positive and you are just making it harder for me instead of helping me yeah, and she was like, that's that's a deal breaker. And the only, like, she tried reasoning. She tried, not bribing, but she tried almost like a kid, like, buying him presents and giving him things. And, like, you can literally have anything you want. I just need you not to be crazy. Yeah. Meanwhile, you just made it worse. You just pulled somebody in front of me and killed him. Like, no. Yeah. While I was pregnant, like, maybe that's the big dragon energy of fuck around and find out. I... I would be on the same page as she was. Yeah. Again, I don't condone murder. No. But we're in a different time where we could just get divorced. Or she did divorce him. Yeah, he could be out there being like, well, that was, that's Rizzio's kid anyway, since that rumor was already flying around. The same. I do not condone violence or murdering anyone. These times, this is how people navigated in power. And women weren't given a lot of options, just like you talked about. We don't have, the, they didn't have the option. And most of the options were to let the husband die and be a widower, right? Messaging that wants to be heard with this strength card, because this strength card, I, which I didn't even mention, the strength card in readings with me, the work, the space that I hold, it represents Lilith. It's all about, I will be considered, and it is about equity. Like the nutshell of Lilith is is equity, particularly for those who identify as female, for women. I wonder if how she felt about the way that because I feel like putting explosives under his bedroom seems like so many things could go wrong there, as they clearly did. Like, like <laughs> what was there not? Was there not a better way? <laughs> like was that her <laughs> idea, or was that? Was, did she just tell the dudes? figure something out and then she was like what the fuck y'all? <laughs> totally i didn't say do that oh my god well the vibe that it gets is kind of she or it, yeah she's like what the fuck dudes like why why was that chaos like this is really a simple task you know <laughs> um but it kind of almost feels like somebody was like literally drunk and rowdy and like it just was like kind of, i know we've had this before but kind of like tomfoolery somebody's like oh my god let's blow it up like nobody could survive that you know but they're like drunk while they're doing it like, <laughs> i, I could know. i could see that yeah i could see that being a drunk idea <laughs> you're like oh it this is a great like new- this is a great idea and then it's like oh but no yeah <laughs> yeah there's really. so many variables that could go wrong he could like not even be in his room when it explodes, you know? And obviously it did go wrong. And then they're just like, oh, let's just chase him down and strangle him. The father of wands of like knowing when to strike, the card actually comes out as like a comedy of errors. And like Mary Queen of Scots has got this vibe of like, can't anybody do anything fucking right? And they fuck that up. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's not supposed to be funny, but it kind of is funny. It is funny though. <laughs> like I was surrounded by idiots. So. Yeah. <laughs> She probably also looks back at some of the mistakes she made, too, and just being like, I don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's done, y'all. It's done. Oh, man. Okay, so what we can take away today is, yes, Mary Queen's of, Queen of Scots did order the execution of her husband, but she does not want to talk to us about it anymore. And um, <laughs> there was an interesting love triangle going on and elizabeth oh pretty probably knew that mary was gonna get her head cut off when she signed the death warrant yeah Yeah. oh yeah (laughs) oh yeah because she's on the same track right i have to do everything to secure my Mm -hmm. lineage my line my country my and this is 
it's this girl outs- keeps fucking up. Though, she she's an outstanding up. wild card. She's messy. She's had all these murders and all this stuff happening, and now she's planning on overtaking me. Oh gosh, I didn't want to have to do this, but yeah, now I'm gonna and, if, <laughs> and signing the death warrant. And I mean, it's more complicated than just that. It's not black and white because of the Catholic Protestant thing. Mary's son did end up being Elizabeth's heir. And Mary was a little bit younger than Elizabeth, I believe. So if she played her cards right, she could have possibly, in fact, been Queen of England as well. So like if if uh, Elizabeth would have died, Mary was her next closest relative, mm. like in the line of succession. So she could have played her cards right, but she it just it just all went spectacularly wrong. It's pulling towards this Leo energy of like ego. The non benevolent aspect of Leo is like really blown out ego. Elizabeth was like, look, the next generation might get this right, but the hell you're going to have it. You've just been too loud, too messy, too fucking rude. King of Wands card, even she had to strike. She had to have the strategy to strike and was like, all right, well, got to do it. I hate to do it, but this is the strategy. You're just too messy. You're just like Lord Darnley. You're a liability now. Yeah. Yes. And I can't have that running around. Yes. And that Father of Wands really is like, weird windows of knowing when to strike of like having to wait until you see a window of opportunity interesting so i'm trying to find mary's chart let's see let's see so sun sagittarius moon capricorn and let's see is it saying her ascending think ascending might be taurus if i'm reading this right well i mean sag sun is a fucking wild card you know what i mean right whenever you were like sagittarius i was like oh (laughs) it's wild (laughs) and and it's like the traveler you know and the philosopher and the theologian and like she was moved back and forth and like these multiple crowns like she was like of course i want that i want it all and they're notorious for sticking their foots in their mouth i'm married to a sag sun (laughs) don't y'all come for me i love it dearly and deeply (laughs) and the non-benevolent side is like foot in mouth disease like you just say brash thing because you just say shit like yes absolutely (laughs) the taurus rising i'm taurus sun um, Taurus and Leo are like the most like, of course I deserve to be in leadership roles because I have the right answers yeah. and I'm capable. Like it, the good part of it is really good and the bad part is really shady. Like, you know, don't everybody like that side of me and sometimes I don't like it either. But <laughs> it's very empowered. It is a, a long game. Taurus is all about the long game. And that Capricorn moon, that's pretty fierce, like the Taurus rising Capricorn moon because Capricorns are a get to the goal it's it's sometimes a win at all costs like i am going to accomplish the task and that's her emotional wiring in that moon space Mm -hmm. so she again is wired to get to the goal the goal is queen like they are on her bingo card from day one and she wants them but sometimes she puts her foot in her mouth because she's a sagittarius (laughs) (laughs) repair and recovery are not her strong yeah (laughs) like i bet she was looking back you know she wrote these letters being like hey let's overthrow elizabeth and get me out of prison i bet she's looking back foot and mouth like why the fuck did i let myself get entrapped into that yeah i was imprisoned And I was writing letters. Of course, they were. They were in code, like, but. Uh, somebody's going to break the code. Yeah. Like, eventually. They know. You're in what, prison. You're you know not... people are reading your letters. God. Bless her heart. That makes sense now, though, with the Sagittarius foot and mouth. <laughs> I'll throw a little shade at myself and Taurus energy in general, also, is that Taurus will get the long game big picture and will outwork and out sustain anyone. Sometimes we're not so good with the details. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, my goodness. So, Nathan, did you have any other leftover questions? I mean, this woman's life was from beginning to end just kind of. Oh, she made so many bad decisions. People made bad decisions for her. If she's like, if y'all could quit talking about me, actually, that would be fantastic. <laughs> y'all it, already, you already made a movie about me, and it wasn't that great. So just uh, stop talking about me. I think that's what it, the energy feels. It feels tired, and it feels kind of disappointed. Like I didn't want you all to talk about the all the things I did wrong. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she wanted. This, was, this isn't what moment. she wanted her legacy to be. Yeah, like, man, okay, I guess they're still talking about me, but what? not the story I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, 
Sorry, Mary. Sorry for the two-part episode we did on you and all the movies made about you. <laughs> Mary, sorry about, we love you. Sorry about the TV show Rain, Mary. You know what? I bet she likes that one. Have you ever seen the TV show Rain? Oh, my I have, God. I still have refused to watch it. It is. It was on the CW. Say no more. For, for a time. <laughs> and it's, first of all, everybody's outfits are like Hot Topic prom dresses. Like, the fashion oh. is wild. I feel like... <laughs> If you go in it realizing that it, the only thing historically accurate in the entire show is that there was a woman named Mary Queen of Scots, <laughs> then um, then you're fine. Everybody's beautiful. The plot lines are bananas. It's like a teenager soap opera yes. set in the 15th. I'm in. I'm gonna go watch it now. <laughs> I wonder if that's like, I, that's I probably can't. like the only I one. Can't. She's like she's like, well, that actress is very beautiful. So this is. I'm into it. <laughs> she probably liked that one. And that was it. <laughs> and then all the other ones, she's like, "Ugh, don't, don't tell the truth." <laughs> Why do y'all have to keep bringing this up? <laughs> well, Tandy, before we sign off, did you want to like close us out, like with the cards? And with that, this reading is complete. These things are something better for the highest and greatest good of all involved to the harm of none. So would it be? So it is now. We as a collective will it so re-release any and all energetics that came to us and through us and allow them back to their rightful places and spaces. We move out of this reading cleansed and clear and within our own energies only. Thank you. Okay. Tandy, this was so much fun. And listeners, uh, Tandy, if you could go ahead and send me like a picture of that spread, if you still have yes, it out, so I can course. post that on mm-hmm. Instagram. And we've, this is our third time. Let's do a, let's do a fourth at the end of the year. How does that sound? I mm. love it. It sounds amazing. I never know what to expect. It is some of the most fun I have all year. Oh. The energy is amazing. You all are amazing. Thank you so much. And we Aww. love you, Tandy. And yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. And Tandy, cheers, bitches. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, bitches. <laughs>